So, I was uh, reading through an article earlier on, and uh, <laughs> this uh, video here was attached. Now, in truth, I haven't watched the video. I just heard the first 20 seconds, and it's not that long a video, in, in all honesty. Um, if I'm able to access the article afterwards, I'll go through that. But if not, I will uh, go through the report, because this is all in the back of the meeting that was hosted or conducted by the Rockefellers, of all people, of course, uh, a few months ago, where Nicola Phillips and Hillary Clinton, etc., all travelled, you know, in their CO two emitting planes to talk about my oppression for whammon. Uh, it seems to be a common theme from our gelled, bull cut, thin lip boot of a, of a first minister who seems to live. Well, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. She could be bullshitting entirely. A lot of feminists, they know they're lying. Uh, hence why they refuse to kind of get into discussions and or debates pertaining to the things that they make claims about. That's why they choose to prioritise selective versions of events or manipulated data, etc. But the, on the flip side, of course, she could genuinely be delusional and believe sincerely and malevolently that her feminist cause is just. I'm more inclined to believe that she's just a misandrist, in all honesty. And what I find fundamentally the most comical, humorous, and above all else, ludicrous <laughs> uh, about people like her, not limited to Thin Lips, of course, but Thin Lips is definitely up there as one of the world's worst in this respect, uh, is how they seem to latch on to problems that women may or may not face in, you know, shittles, for lack of a better term, or to be a bit, a bit more polite and candid, uh, you know, third world nations. You know, women, women in Afghanistan wear burqas, and because of that, that's why we need feminism in Scotland. It's just never ending. It really is never ending. But anyway, I've spoken too much. Let's get some, let's get some comedy gold, shall we? From little Miss Jill Bullcut, who even while she sat down with her shit haircut, she can't help but talk with her hands. Hmm. We have still a long way to go uh, towards gender equity, but the progress we have made is fragile. And if we don't safeguard it, nurture it, and continue to build upon it, there is a real danger, in my view, in the years to come, that it could go backwards. Gender equity. It's not even about equality anymore. Oh, no, 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 it's about gender equity. You know, there's another clip on my channel from somewhere where she made a similar claim at a feminist convention, the... Uh, Scottish Council of Women and Girls. She stood at her podium, clips on my channel, might even include it after this, where she spoke uh, and she made a, she made reference to that again, like, all oh, the progress that we've made. Oh, it can't go backwards. But who's defining what's progress? What she's really meaning by that statement, irrespective of whether or not you believe that she's just reading a script, what she's effectively saying there is that the progress, quote, quote, aka their progressive cancerous policies, there's a fear that things might go back to the way that they should be, as opposed to the lunacy that we are proposing, you know? I'm Nicola Sturgeon, I'm the First Minister of Scotland. I think if more women are in leadership positions, that acts as a catalyst for change elsewhere. And there's a wealth of evidence that whether we look at governments or the boards of companies or other organisations, if there is greater gender equity in the representation on these bodies, then decision making is more inclusive and better. If you look at climate change, women disproportionately are on the front line in climate change, particularly that's why she sat in cop and said that climate change was a feminist issue, you know? I've never understood this argument. I've, I've never understood it, you know? Um, especially what she said prior to the climate change reference, where she said that, oh, all the evidence is that, you know, more women on boards, uh, you know, make things more inclusive, better decision-making, etc., etc. But in the next breath, we're told that we're all one. Well, you know, the only difference between us is our sexual characteristics. You know, that would suggest to me that men and women are actually different in some capacity. But, <laughs> whoa, 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 can't say that. Can't say that. I've never understood this. And I don't hear the likes of Nicola Sturgeon complaining that certain fields in Scotland, in this context, are overrepresented by females. Schools, teachers, for example. Oh, they don't care about that. Uh, biology, I think, is another one. There's one of the other... Uh, is it, I don't know if it's psychology in particular. I'd have to re-look it up. So quote me if I'm wrong. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. But there's another field, and I'm just thinking off the top of my head here. 
they only ever seem to have an issue when things are too male dominated, you know? And on top of that as well, let me also add that they have all said on many occasions there was a campaign, the 50-50 campaign, which was to force uh, every political party and boards across Scotland, etc. to have 50-50 female to male representation. But there was an av there was like a little caveat that was hidden within the small print of that, and it's at least 50%. Sturgeon, another example I can give you off the top of my head. She stood in Parliament, a clip's on my channel again, not too long ago, it was an International Women's Day, where she spoke about, there's only three countries in the world that have achieved gender equality. You know, that's not good enough. I looked these countries up, and I can't remember the names off the top of my head, but the disparity was, it wasn't 50-50. No, it wasn't. It was there was a lot more females in one instance, but there was more females in all three of the aforementioned parliaments in, in, in other parts of the world. More females than men. It wasn't equal. But that is the point. Gender equality, quote unquote, or gender equity, to this bull cut headed boot and everybody else who peddles the same talking points is it does not matter to them if the parliament, for example, in Scotland was seventy percent female, thirty percent men. The issue is that until it reaches at least fifty percent, it is gender inequality. Particularly in the Global South, women have uh, child caring responsibilities disproportionately, have the responsibility to uh, get food for their, their families at uh, work. What are the men doing when all this is happening in the Global South, as she calls it? What are the men doing? Like, it's all about the whammy. Climate change, non existent man made climate change. Women most affected because they're doing most of the childcare. Oh, fuck off. What are the men doing when all this is happening? Like, nothing. Are they just sitting in their arse? in agriculture and these are uh, the, the women that are impacted by climate change right now. Equally, uh, women will be on the front line of implementing the solutions to climate change. So if we can... So men, it's, 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 listen, this is female supremacy. And I know that sounds very, very over dramatic in nature, but this is th that is female supremacy. Oh, it will be women. It will be women that will find the solutions to climate change. Oh, is that right? Do you know what I find remarkable, and I will play this back a bit and I'll let it play out, is the fact that Sustainable Development Goal 5 is gender equality. Now, there is a reason for that, because it gives an excuse to fund feminist causes, to promote feminism, and use useful idiots like Little Miss Jail Bullcut here, use people like her to spout this shit. They think that oh, they're being empowered and they're doing what's right for the woman, sticking it to the white man, of course, because we're the eternal oppressors. But the reality of the matter is the malevolent undertones that these people cannot see. There is a reason that that is included within the Sustainable Development Goals. There is a reason useful idiots like Little Miss Jill Bullcut here get away with spouting this shit. Attacking the patriarchy, etc, etc. The reality of the matter is that this is female supremacy. And when it comes to feminism, all these things such as, oh, we need to put more funding into schools in Pakistan, etc., for females to get education. It's all about reducing the birth rates. All that's all this is about. Attacking the family unit, reducing the birth rates by extension. You know, that's why, because a better educated population reduces the birth rates. That's what it's about. Why, how are women in any of a better position, just on a separate note, on any of a better position to come up with the solutions to climate change? It's just waffle. To involve women in those decisions, then the outcomes are going to be better. Better. Equally, uh, women will be on the front line of implementing the solutions to climate change. So, if we can better involve women in those decisions, then the outcomes are going to be better. Better represent what is needed and be more sustainable as a, a result. Other thing I would say, though, is it's not enough in and of itself to have women in positions of leadership. I think there is much more to be done to support women in those positions and to continue to tackle and challenge some of the barriers that women, even at the highest levels of decision making, still face. Women uh, have been fighting these battles for generations. We have made progress, but sometimes it feels as if we take one step forward and two steps back. So we need to keep powering on uh, to achieve equity because we are most definitely overdue for equity. <laughs> You know, she did the proverbial generations with their hands moving to the side. You know, but that's, it's just nonsense. What are they talking about? They always peddle this nonsense. Always. What battles? What fucking battles? You know, <laughs> it's, it's just remarkable. But as I, I made reference to, I have got a clip on my channel. I'm going to find it now. Right? 
But before I do that, actually, I'll show you something else. Just wait, wait, right? I have been fighting these battles for generations. Uh, from uh, generations of Indigenous Scots. For generations. From uh, generations of Indigenous Scots. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Anyway, yeah. I made reference to her saying at the start of her video, that video there that uh, she said, Oh, we can't learn to go backwards. You know? And I said that um, she said something similar at a feminist convention a while ago. Well, here's it here. And there is significant progress that we still need to make because notwithstanding these victories, it is very clear uh, today that gender equality in many respects is still a cause that is unwon. And I would go further than that and echo the comment that Louise made, uh, because it's not just that there are areas where we haven't yet made significant progress. We live in a world today where it feels uh, very often, sometimes on a day-to-day -day basis, that we face a regression, that we face a real backlash against some of the progress that has been made. Not just in gender equality, but when we look at issues of race and, and migration, uh, that there is now a need uh, not just to make further progress, but to very deliberately protect the progress we've already made, not to allow it to be pushed backwards. So here we have the reports. Global leaders call for urgent action on gender equity. So we've surpassed gender equality now. It's all about that sweet, sweet equity, you know. <laughs> I, I love how it was the national. Uh, they, 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 they said that Thin Lips was a global leader, an influential woman. I mean, hi, hi, oh, is she hi? So I'll come down. Hillary Clinton, of course, is quoted here. I'm not going to read her shite in truth. I don't like Hillary Clinton, but I'm just giving you a, a, a wee. <laughs> Fuck you, know. Wait a minute. <laughs> you idiot. Oh shit! No! 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 <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> you know. Anyway. <laughs> oh, what a <I> sound. <laughs> um, I'm wondering if there's even a quote from Sturgeon in this or from Wasted My Time. Democracy is under attack globally with serious implications for gender equity. From Turkey to Poland, Iran to uh, Myanmar. Afghanistan to Egypt, most recently Ukraine. Women are on the front lines defending against simultaneous assaults on women's rights and democratic values. What has Ukraine got to do with anything? And Poland! Ukraine! Are the women are allowed to leave the country, the men aren't allowed to leave. Well, that's what they're telling us anyway, but yet women most affected. I mean, get... <laughs> women's political participation and power. It's always an emphasis on power threatens authoritarian governments who view women's leadership as tilting a zero-sum game of power politics. To reinforce gender hierarchies and thwart democratic progress, concerted efforts are underway to roll back women's rights, including slashing funding for women's programs, contesting sexual and reproductive rights, and reversing commitments to pre prevent domestic violence under the Istanbul, Istanbul sorry, Convention and National Laws. See again, no, this, as I said, the, the, the malevolent undertone is the fact that part of the major agenda at play here is lowering the birth rate. Now, whether that's done through manufactured crises, which we're seeing, or lowering the population overall, I should I should probably add as a caveat or as an uh, as a correction. But <clears throat> gender hierarchies or patriarchies, if you will, sort of instills uh, the need, the requirement for women to you know, get pregnant and and whatnot. Now, I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but this is what this is about. You know, they call it progress, progress sorry, to empower women, when the reality of the matter is, by extension, it's def it, it sounds great on paper. Well, well, women are entitled to equal rights, etc., but there's a reason it's being done. Do you think multi-millionaires and multi-billionaires give the slightest shit about a woman's feelings? No, they don't. <sighs> 
And as for this, reproductive rights, oh, how dare the countries, uh, not that there is many, put things in place to try and uh, discourage women from having abortions. Uh, opposition to gender equity and women's rights activism has become more vocal, globalised, <coughs> or global, sorry, and organised with the emergence of extreme and conservative actors, right-wing populist and nationalist groups, and men's rights groups that are coming together. <gasps> oh, but it's fine when all of you come together, but if other groups that you deem inappropriate and a threat to your fucking cause come together, that's a problem, because it's rules for thee and not for me, I. At the same time, civic space is shrinking, leading to constraints on women-led organisations that are essential to transparent and responsive governance. I mean, what are you talking about here? Because from where I'm sat, everything in Scotland in this context seems to be directed towards helping and empowering women, from education all the way to um, to tackling gender-based violence, which in and of itself is very misleading in nature in terms of uh, what it actually says on the tin in comparison to what it's defined as. You know, the list is endless. COVID-19 has accelerated trends, these trends being, uh, has accelerated these trends by giving authoritarian leaders a mechanism to restrict democratic freedom in the name of addressing the pandemic. Oh, right, oh, oh, so, so, oh. Women in politics also face an increasingly hostile environment. Targeted against, uh, targeted attacks against women leaders, uh, women leaders, sorry, journals and human rights defenders, <laughs> human rights defenders, uh, are are proliferate through unchecked and unregulated abuse on social media. And even this is a lie. Because men, conservative men on Twitter, and Jeremy Corbyn, by the way, the last time a study was done, and this came from, like, the Met, what was it? It was a left-wing publication that even publicised this. It showcased quite clearly, quite evidently, that men, white men, white conservative men, on average, face more abuse on social media than women do. But no, we can't talk about that because it dismantles the narrative because everything is about women. And even if there was more women than men being attacked and abused verbally on Twitter or any social media platform, it would make it right or wrong. The point is here that they completely ignore the fact that men get abused too on social media and focus solely on the fact that women get abused because in all, as long as they do that, they can solidify this idea, this concept that they're abused specifically for being women but when it happens to a man when a male politician is abused the man or the, the in, just in general society doesn't assume that he's been abused specifically for being a man you know coordinated campaigns of disinformation prep oh, disinformation come from hillary clinton nicola fucking sturgeon hey this information perpetuates cycles of gender inequality. And even this, I mean, I'm not going to pull it up, but I've done this before. Even this, look what, oh, women's political exclusion, oh yeah. Including by discouraging women from running for office, pushing them out of politics, or leading them to self-censor and disengage from political discord. The same way that straight white men can't talk about any of their problems, because if they do, oh well, 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 well you're typical of the Anyway, let's see if anything comes out here from Sturgeon. So this is a recommendations as well, on a separate note. They say here that they want to fostering conditions for women political leaders to succeed. There is a need for establishing support ne uh, networks for political leaders, uh, female political leaders and heads of state through high level training programs and mentorship. Women leaders should use their platforms to elevate other women leaders successes and call out attacks. Diverse women's movements, including women of colour and indigenous women, should work to coordinate the message. Governments and private actors should mobilise, support and finance financial resources for women-led actions and online social media campaigns right they also say here addressing violence against women what about violence against men policymakers should ensure international standards and legal frameworks address all forms of violence against women but nothing for men uh, the united nations should create a new code of conduct on women's rights and online abuse uh, to hold powerful actors like social media and big tech companies to account but nothing for men Global covenants like the 2023 US Summit for Democracy should prioritise commitments that establish new internet and social media standards for w with women, leader, leaders, activists and private sectors, but nothing for men. Governments should implement and enforce existing gender equity reforms at, at global and national levels, including the Istanbul Convention, electoral quotas, <laughs> gender mainstreaming efforts, states should integrate gender equity into their broader democracy agendas as well as for forcing policy development and security assistance backed by adequate resources. Governments and multilateral should strengthen and monitoring should strengthen monitoring and reporting mechanisms as well as training for law enforcement to address rollbacks in women's rights and threats against civil society, women's rights defenders and feminist activists. I mean fucking hell. Oh inclusive climate action. Climate change, the ex 
Existential threat of our time is a risk multiplier that threatens international peace and security for all, from a crisis stricken Afghanistan to the drought affected Sahel. Well, why don't you use your cloud city now? We won't do that though, will we now? Climate change is creating hostile conditions that wreak havoc. Oh, and it's all the women that feel the brunt, eye, eh? You know? <laughs> At the same time, women are uniquely positioned to contribute to climate solutions. Gender division of labour mean that women are already on the front lines. <laughs> I can't take this nonsense, man. More recommendations here. They say that governments, businesses, foundations and civil society should establish a climate financing regime that increases access to capital for women's organisations. Uh, private actors through creative communication campaigns should mobilise uh, stakeholders to hold businesses uh, accountable for environmental, social and governance commitments. Uh, climate action and women's movements should join forces to create a more intensive, organised and broader constituency demanding... Uh, action on climate change. <laughs> Efforts should include women, youth, and indigenous people, excluding white men. Because <laughs> where, where's the man there? So indigenous people that encapsulates or incorporates men and women, I would assume, but not for white men. <laughs> nah, never does it. Never does like. Government should government sorry should ensure gender parity in all levels of climate change decision making. Policymakers should engage women in the design, delivery, and assessment of inclusive climate interventions. Policymaking should integrate climate-related security risks into women, peace, and security and national, national action plans and gender into national action plans. Ah, oh, Jesus, what waffle, man. And inclusive frameworks for gender equity. Ah, oh, member states of the UN should promote local efforts to implement UNSCR whatever the fuck that is, and ensure women inform and shape the programs and monitor progress. Policymakers should engage local women's organizations to analyze WPS frameworks and national action plans. The UN should institutionalize the participation of civil society, NGOs, and the private sector in all processes. The United Nations should connect top-down multilateral processes with women leaders and human rights defenders. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh dear. There's, there's not much more. I think I'll leave it at that, in all honesty. I just want to show you. <laughs> oh, fucking hell, let's get it full fucking go. Like, oh, where are you, Miss Bocats? Let me see you one more time, eh?